Editing your pattern designs can be quick and easy when you use symbols instead of regular objects. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to work with symbols when you're making a half trap repeat and how to get the two different results that you see here. So let's get right into it. Real quick, let's review what a symbol in Illustrator is and how it functions. In my previous symbols video, I showed you that once you make an object into a symbol and when you edit it in edit symbols mode, Every instance of that symbol on your file will be edited in the exact same way. So you only have to make edits to one of the symbols and the rest will change at the same time. In that video, I showed you how this could be a really great method to use when you want to edit your repeat edges in order to ensure that the edges all repeat properly even after editing them. This can also come in handy on a half drop repeat as well. So let's see how that works. So we're starting by making a new file in Illustrator. We're making our artboard 4 inches by 4 inches. That's going to be the size of the repeat, choosing RGB and 300 PPI. And here I have this flower element that I'm going to use to create my half drop repeat. I'll first start by making the flower into a symbol. If you don't see your symbols panel, you can go to Window, Symbols to pull it up. Now select the flower with the selection tool and drag that flower right into the symbols panel. Now you'll see here that this symbols dialog box pops up. You can name your symbol if you want to, Export type can be movie clip or graphic, it really doesn't matter in Illustrator. For symbol type, you can keep the default dynamic symbol and click OK. So now you can see that this motif appears in the symbols panel. And when you click on the motif on the artboard, it now has a plus sign on it, which is showing you that this object is a symbol. So now let's make our half drop repeat using our new symbol. In case you don't know, a half drop repeat is a repeat where the elements of every other column drop halfway down like this. So to start, the first thing I'm going to do with the symbol is place it right in the center of the artboard. And in order to do that, I'm going to go to my Align panel and I'm going to make sure that Align to Artboard is selected. And then I'm going to click on Horizontal Align Center and Vertical Align Center and that causes my flower to be placed right in the middle of the artboard. So now I'm going to copy the symbol to the edges of the artboard to create the actual repeat part. And since this is a half drop repeat, we need to follow these specific instructions in order to get it right. We know that the artboard is 4 inches by 4 inches. That's the intended size of the repeat. And in order to make this half drop repeat, where every other column drops down by half, what we need to do is divide the size of the repeat in half. So if my artboard is 4 inches, then half of that is 2 inches. So we're going to be working now in 2 inch increments in all 4 directions. Let's first copy the flower symbol over to the top left corner. So we're going to select the symbol, right click, hit transform, move, and we're going to type in negative 2 inches horizontally and negative 2 inches vertically. Make sure preview is checked so that you can see where this would place your symbol. And it's going to place it on this top left corner, which is what we want. And now we're going to click on copy to copy the symbol over to that position. And that caused our first symbol to be placed on the first edge of the artboard. And it's halfway up and halfway to the left of our center motif, which is where we need it to be in order to make our half drop repeat. Next, we're going to copy the symbol again and place it on the bottom left corner. So selecting the center motif again, let's right click, hit transform, move, and this time I'll type in negative 2 inches horizontally and positive 2 inches vertically. I'm typing positive vertically this time because I want the flowers to go down. So make sure preview is checked so that you can see where this would place your symbol. And it's going to place it on the bottom left corner, which is what we want. And now we're going to click on copy and the symbol has been copied over to that position. Next, we're going to copy the symbol again and place it on the top right corner this time. So selecting the center motif again, let's right click, hit transform, move, and this time I'll type in positive 2 inches horizontally and negative 2 inches vertically. Make sure preview is checked so that you can see where this would place your symbol and it's going to place it on this top right corner, which is what we want. And now we're going to click on copy and the symbol has been copied over to that position. Next, we're going to copy the symbol again and place it on the bottom right corner this time. So selecting the center motif again, let's right click, hit transform, move, and this time I'll type in positive 2 inches horizontally and positive 2 inches vertically. Make sure that preview is checked so that you can see where this would place your symbol. And it's going to place it on the bottom right corner, which is what we want. And now we're going to click on copy and the symbol has been copied over to that position. Now let's make our background box and our background color. So I'm choosing this color here, choosing the rectangle tool, Clicking on the page and typing in 4 inches by 4 inches since we're making a 4 inch repeat. 
Then we're going to align it to the artboard. So with the square selected, we'll go to the Align panel, making sure we have Align to Artboard selected, click on Horizontal Align Center and Vertical Align Center to get it aligned perfectly to the artboard. Now hit right-click, Arrange, Send to Back to send your background box behind your motifs. Now the last step is to make the invisible bounding box that will make this into a repeating pattern swatch. To do that, we'll click on the color background box, hit Ctrl C to copy and Ctrl B to paste in back. Now there's a duplicate of that box in the back. And while it's still selected, we're going to remove the fill and stroke to get our invisible bounding box. So now we're going to drag over the whole pattern and drag it into the swatches panel. And quickly, we'll test our repeat before we move on to the next step. So make a big rectangle on the side here in any solid color, click on the new pattern swatch that you just made, and there's your half drop repeating pattern. Zoom in and make sure to check that there are no mistakes on the pattern, and if it's okay, you can get rid of your test box. Okay, so now let's see how our symbols are going to come in handy on our half drop repeat. But real quick, if you're finding this video useful, please hit the like button and please subscribe. It'll help me to keep bringing you more useful videos like this. So in pattern design, it's often the case that you're going to want to or you're going to need to make some changes to your motifs. By making the motifs into symbols, you'll make your job easier because you'll only have to make the changes to one of the symbols and all of them will change at the same time. Here's how. Select any of the flower symbols, go up to the control panel and click on edit symbol to get it into edit symbol mode. You'll only see the changes occur on the one motif at first, but you'll see what happens when we finish. So I'm going to make several changes. First, let's rescale the flower, rotate the flower, and recolor the flower. Now if I'm happy with that, I'm going to double click on my page to get out of edit symbol mode and voila! All of those symbols have changed in the exact same way and I only had to make the changes to one of them. So now I'll drag over everything and drag it into the swatches panel to make a new repeat swatch. I'll make a big rectangle to test my pattern and when I fill that in with the new pattern, as you can see, I've just made a new repeat and my repeat is still seamless even after the changes. Cool, right? Okay, so you might have noticed that there was one change that I didn't make. I rescaled the flower, I rotated the flower, and I recolored the flower. But I didn't move the flower. The reason that I didn't move the flower is because on a half drop repeat, you really don't want to move your elements over too much in any direction because, as you saw, when we created the pattern, a half drop repeat is a more calculated pattern. You want to keep the motifs in one column dropped halfway down from where they are on the column next to it. Moving your objects too much can throw this half drop effect off. So for that reason, I didn't demonstrate moving the symbols. But if you just want to make a slight movement of your symbols, it's okay to do this. And you would do it in the exact same way that we used to make the other changes. Just select your symbol and click on Edit Symbol in the control panel. And move the symbol as much as you want, but like I said, I don't recommend moving it too much so that you don't lose your half drop repeat effect. At the beginning of this video, I told you that I would show you how to make this half drop repeat with the two different results that you see here. On this first version, which is the version that we just made, all of the motifs are very uniform. They're the same color, the same size, and they're all facing in the same direction as one another. But if you want to add a little more variation to your pattern, like on the second version right here, then here's how you would do it. I'm copying and pasting this pattern onto a new file so as not to interfere with the existing symbols here. So to make that second version of the repeat, you would have followed all the same steps that we did to make the first version, but once we're done, we're going to select the center motif, we're going to right click, and we're going to select break link to symbol. When you break this link, it means that this specific symbol is going to turn back into a regular object that doesn't follow what the other symbols are doing. So now that I've broken the link, if I edit this object and make it go in a different direction and make it have a different size as the others, none of the other motifs will be affected. Likewise, if I were to select one of the objects that's still a symbol and edit it in edit symbol mode, it will only change the other objects that are still symbols and it will not affect the motif with the link that's been broken. If you're going to use this method, make sure you break the link of the center motif only and not the edge motifs because you want to keep the motifs on the edges all following what the other motifs on the edges are doing in order to keep your repeat seamless. So now that I've broken the symbol link of the center motif and made these changes to it, 
When I drag this swatch into the swatches panel and make my new repeat, now you'll see that every other column has a different variation of the flowers as the columns in between. And that's how you can make this alternate version of your half chart repeat using symbols. And another cool thing that I want to show you is how you can use symbols to create totally different variations of your pattern repeats in a really fast way. And I'm going to show you how to do that in the next video. Click on the link to watch. See you there.